Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Welcome to another painting demo. Today I want to share the process of this painting of a dog in water. So her name is Fiona. This is my friend Kevin's dog. She is one of the best dog I have ever seen. She's super friendly, super well behaved, and she is a beautiful dog. So I took this photo of her a couple of weeks ago when we were having lunch and it was a sunny day next to the Lake Washington at Kirkland and Kevin just let the dog run wild so she's just having a great time at the lake she jumped into the water and she's having a lot of fun and I took a quick photo while she's in the water and I just love the overall lighting and the contrast of her warm fur and the cool lake water and I knew I wanted to paint this one as soon as I saw the photo. That being said, a water surface like this is not the easiest thing to paint. So I did do a quick value study. Just to give me a rough idea how do I group the value and how do I simplify all the complex ripples and reflections. So the first wash, I pre-wet the surface a little bit and I started to paint the color of the light so the warm color on the fur and I have that connect to the actual reflection of the dog and do a little bit of wet onto wet while I still can and the purpose is just to get the color on the paper I'm not worrying about the detail or anything I'm not even worrying about trying to define the form of the dog I did the drawing underneath and that's pretty much it I'm right now I'm just trying to get the color of the light in and here I do a overall blue wash on the background as well so I try to be careful not to paint into the dog now, because I didn't wait for it to be completely dry, there might be a little bit of blending. But since the mixture is not too wet, it should be okay. So for the first wash, don't worry about any ripples or anything. Just trying to give a clean wash and transition the color from cool to a little bit warmer as it gets closer to the shallow water. I paint into the reflection of the dog just a little bit. It's going to get a lot darker anyway, so I don't worry about it too much. Now, while the paper is still a little bit damp, I mix a dryer mixture and just do some soft ripples right on top. Be sure your mixture is nice and thick because if it's too wet, if it's too thin, is going to bleed out a little bit too much and get some cauliflower edges so be sure that it is nice and thick so it will soften a little bit but it's still going to be in control now as we come down to the shallow water the ripple gets less visible so i had it fade off in the bottom I also try to have my brush stroke follow the shape of the ripple. So where Fiona is in the water, it will have a ripple coming outward, center from her. So I will have a few of the ripples a little bit more curved, just to create that radio effect. So the first wash is done, so I'm starting to mix a thicker and a darker mixture for the second wash. So I'm going to start to define the ripple just a little bit more, paint a little bit darker reflection, darker shape on them, and also the middle value on the dog as well. So I'm starting to paint the middle value on the ripple, get them just a little bit more defined. It is incredibly complicated, so I am not trying to copy the ripple one to one, that will be madness so what i did is i tried to look at the photo and try to learn the shape and the pattern and the value of the ripples and i try to treat it as a visual language i actually had another video talking about how to paint water surfaces so be sure to check out that video if you haven't
So what I'm doing right now is I try to paint and leave some light in between all the ripples that I painted because water surface is uneven. So some of it might be the reflection of the sky, some of it might be bounce the sunlight into my eyes. So some parts are lighter, some parts are a little bit bluer, a little bit darker. And this is also a very shallow water. So you do see a little bit of color underneath. So try to keep all of that in mind and paint the water surface as I go. And now I'm starting to paint the middle value of the dog. And this is the part that I start to define the structure and the form of the dog. So there's actually not that much light value on the dog. It's mostly on her back and her fluffy tail. The position of the sun is around noontime, so it's directly above, maybe a little bit away from us. So she is a little bit of back lid and also a little bit top lid. So that's why you see a little bit of this rim light effect on her. But because the water surface also bounces off light on her, so even the dark side of her is actually still not as dark. So we leave out some of the highlight on the top, and the rest of her is mostly middle value. And now after I paint the middle value, I try to go back in and paint a little bit darker shape, darker values, went on to wet, just to get a little bit of soft transition from dark to light. And I try to connect that to the actual reflection of her on the water. So the water surface, we do have some reflection of the dog's warm fur color, but also the water itself is a little bit cooler and greener, so it gets a little bit yellower. So all that color will come into play when I'm trying to paint her reflection. And I continue down connecting her reflection to rest of the ripples underneath. And as we approach the foreground, I start to change the color to something a lot warmer, just to show the transition from deeper water to shallow water. So I pre-wet the upper right corner just to paint the reflection of the tree. Now the tree is not visible, but we do see the reflection. So I start to paint that in just to give it a little bit more context and a little bit more interesting shapes. Now while the foreground is still a little bit wet, I am starting to paint some of the stone and the rock underneath. Again, there's countless detail here, so I'm not able to paint them all. All I'm trying to do is to give a little bit of suggestion and hints of the stone underneath the water surface. So a little bit of softness that will give you the sense of translucency. It will feel like it is underneath the water. So just paint the shadow underneath each stone. Have an overlap a little bit. It's all visual language couple brush strokes here and there in the right place and you feel like there's some stones and gravels underneath the water surface. Something will also sell the effect is to paint around the highlight reflections because those part of the ripples we see the highlights on the water so we are not able to see the stone underneath the water so by painting around those it also give you that illusion those stones are underneath the water so it's very important that you really study your subject matter you really study the source and especially something as complex as these try to find several properties and patterns things that will help you to turn that into visual language so that you don't have to paint all the little details but it will still look convincing and believable so whenever you find a subject you want to paint before you start painting really try to spend some time to study it now i'm painting the dark value on the dog so now is the time to give it just a little bit of details as well as define the form a little bit more. So by adding some more dark, the light become lighter and we start to feel the form of the dog a lot better as well. There's a little bit of contact shadow here. 
So water surface is a surface, which means that it does receive light and shadow. So just because it's not a hard surface, doesn't mean the laws of physics doesn't apply to it. So here I'm also completing the dark value on the reflection of the dog. Get some of those reflection a little bit more definitions. A little bit dark values in some of the ripples. Now you don't want to overdo it, only some of the areas has darker ripples, depends on what is reflecting. So when you're painting something really repetitive like these, it's very easy to go autopilot and stop thinking about what you're painting. So try to avoid that and really have each brushstroke mean something, make conscious decisions all the time. So here I'm trying to darken the reflection of the tree just a little bit. And start to give some more darker details of the gravels underneath. So the painting is almost finished, but I do want to add just a little bit more gravels underneath the water. And I also want to give an and I also want to unify the water surface a little bit more. So after it's dry, I start to do a glaze over all of it. So feel some of the highlight on the ripples, make them just a little bit bluer so we don't have a lot of the light in the dark jumping around. And as we come down to the shallow water, I transition it to darker and warmer colors. And since I'm painting a slightly darker tone, it gives me another opportunity to give just a little bit more contrast on the highlights on the shallow water. And since I do a glaze over, the paper become damp again, so I can do some wet onto wet details and paint some more gravels underwater. So I switch to a smaller brush and use the tip of the brush to put in some soft details. And because I'm painting this wet onto wet, a lot of detail will really soften and fade back. So these details will be soft and very subtle. So as you can see, even though it doesn't look exactly like the photo, I am able to interpret what I see from the photo into a painting. And if I take away the photo, nobody will really see what it looks like originally. And if the painting can stand on its own, then I believe it is a successful painting. I hope you enjoyed this painting and this demo. This is a special painting for me, as it brings me back to that sunny noon having lunch with my good friends. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.